welcome to the viewers where in this our ongoing NFO series, new fund offer series where we connect with the top management and top hierarchy of the AMCs to understand the new fund uh, that they're bringing into the market, uh, understand how it works, why it is so beneficial for them to invest uh, in this new fund and uh, what, are the, what, what, what was the thought process and what was the insights that were put in place uh, behind or the brains behind this fund uh, coming together. Uh, so today uh, with us, we have uh, Mr. Deepak Ramaraju, uh, Head of Equities at uh, Sriram uh, AMC Limited. Now, he has over 22 years of experience in the equity markets, a chemical engineer by academic background, but I think a very big veteran in the equity markets. Uh, welcome, sir. Welcome to the uh, talk. Thanks. Thanks, Abhinay. I'm audible, right? Yes, yes, you are. You are. Uh, so, sir, I mean, we we'll, we can jump uh, right in. Uh, is that this this fund? It is the multi sector rotation fund that you know we are talking about, the Sriram multi sector rotation fund. So, uh, my very first question to you about this is that uh, can you elaborate on this enhanced fundamental investment model? That is the EQI model that has been used uh, for the stock selection within the chosen sectors. So, enhanced quantum mental investment, the TQI, what we call us, it's a combination of quant plus fundamental. Okay. So, in quant, we look at factor models, patterns and trends, correlations and covariations. Mm -hmm. So, that's what we look at the quant. And quant will mm -hmm. act as an input to mm -hmm. our fundamental analysis. Okay. So, when once the quant output has come out, based mm -hmm. on the stock outputs that the quant model throws out, we'll run the fundamental analysis on that, then we identify the stocks that we need to invest into the portfolio. That's how the entire quantum mental framework works. Now, it can okay. be a stock, it can be a sector, it can be any other asset class as well. So, that's how it works, basically. Okay. So, can you give me a brief uh, you know, overview? What is this fund all about? Like, uh, I mean, if I go, when I go through the uh, you know, uh, the marketing material or the collaterals of the fund, uh, the very first line that stands out is, are you old-fashioned or with the trend? So, like, uh, can you give us a nice, uh, you know, overview of the fund? Okay. To just give an overview of the fund, actually, multi-sector multi rotation fund, it's about, it's a, first of all, it's a thematic fund. It's a subcategory under the thematic fund, the first of its yeah. kind in the country. Okay. And, we are the first one to launch such a fund. Mm -hmm. So normally why this we came out with this fund is because many of the investors will invest in different sectors and themes. Correct. But each and every sector and theme has got its own cycles. So Correct. some of the investors will not be able to, will be able to make an entry, but will not be able to make an exit at the right point of time. Mm -hmm. Some of the investors will end enter at the later stage of the cycle, but they enter uh, they get end up into a kind of sector traps. Correct. So it's the kind of uh, point pain point of the investor that we want to address. So what we generally do here, here is in this, when once one, we invest in five different sectors at any point of time. So it's going to be a focused diversification. It's not a broad-based diversification that we are going to do. It's going to be a focused diversification. So within this five kind of sectors, when one sector is kind of underperforming, we rotate the, uh, the fund from that particular sector into another sector. So we keep always mm -hmm. maintaining the trend rather than when the trend is kind of diminishing. The sector is not performing. We move out of that sector, mm -hmm. move into another sector, so that the overall returns of the fund is always kind of maintained. So that's the kind of idea yeah. behind this entire uh, multi-sector rotation. By doing this, we'll be addressing three pain points of the investors. One, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a completely diversified portfolio. We are going to have a di focused diversification. It also means that the investor risk is also minimized because you're not putting all your eggs in one single sector or one mm -hmm. single theme. To that extent, mm -hmm. we are making it a focused diversification of five sectors. And mm -hmm. we have seen in the past, in the last 10 years of financial data, that if one invests in kind of only five sectors, the return expectations can be much higher, close to close to double of uh, NSE 500. Okay. I don't say that it's going to be NSE 500, but it will be much better of NSE 500. And irrespective of the market cycles, the top five performing sectors will always deliver better alpha to the fund. Okay. That's the idea behind that. That is one. Second okay. thing is there won't be any kind of sector traps for the investors. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. for the investors. Basically, they can keep invested because we do the necessary sector rotation. Correct. And assuming if the investor does the sector rotation on his or her, her own, basically. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is they'll end up paying capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. So 
that is one thing that is going to be kind of an advantage here in this fund. When we do, do the rotation from one fund to one sector to another sector, the capital gains is avoided here because mm -hmm. at the fund level, there's no capital gains when we do the rotations. To that Correct. extent, uh, the investors are much more benefited. That's the three main advantages of investing in this fund. Okay. So, so then how does the quantumental model prioritize and rank the sectors for investment and how often is this ranking will be revisited? So it's a double quant engine that we run basically here. So in the mm -hmm. first level, we run the quant models on the sectors. Mm -hmm. So when I tell we run the quant model on the sectors, what we have done is we looked at all the amphi sectors, amphi defined sectors in NSE 500. So NSE 500 is my starting universe and it also acts as my benchmark. So we have looked at all the 22 defined amphi sectors. Amphi has mm -hmm. defined 22 sectors. So we looked at all the stocks which are classified against these 22 sectors. Now, what we did was we found that three sectors were very small. One was forest material, mm -hmm. the other one was diversified, and the one was century textile, sorry, uh, utilities. In diversified, mm -hmm. we had century textile, when uh, utilities, we had VA Tech Papa, and uh, the forest material, we had four paper stocks. So what mm -hmm. we did is we moved that forest material stocks into the consumer durables, and the utilities one, we moved to capital goods. And for example, um, the diversified one, we moved to real estate. When once we did that, so we ended up with 19 sectors. So we built customized indices of all these 19 sectors. So mm -hmm. if one goes to indices side, there are 13 sectors that have already been constructed. So what we did is we built indices for all the 19 sectors. We checked the performance of all those 13 sectors with our 13 sectors collateral. So they were working in tandem with the NSE indices, perfectly with Correct. the NSE indices. Correct. So that's where we were confident of the indices that we built. When okay. the indices are built, we run the quant models on the index. So index is nothing but similar to a stock. It has got its own kind of volatility pattern, its kind of movements in the historical price movement, everything. So we run the quant models on that. Then once we run the quant model on the index, we're able to rank the indices. The top five. Based on this ranking, we're able to identify the top five sectors where we need to be in. So that's how we're able to do that actually. When once we identify the top five sectors, so we pick the stocks from these sectors. So we run again a quant model within those sectors again on the stocks of these five sectors. Then we'll be able to pick the pick and choose the right kind of stocks into the portfolio based on the second quant model. Okay. 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 So, so then my next question is about the risk management. Is that what specific measures are in place, uh, you know, to minimize the sector traps and ensure uh, timely sector exits? See, what is we do uh, rebalancing of the portfolio? That okay. is because we want to understand how the trend is changing on a shorter duration. So one month is a fairly decent kind of a shorter duration to understand the change in trends. Mm -hmm. That is one. Second thing is from the fundamental point of view, we'll have to understand what are the parameters, the macroeconomic parameters or the government policies which are impacting those sectors. So Correct. accordingly, we'll be able to build a conviction on those sectors whether there's any fundamental change that has happened in those sectors or not. Correct. So that is that is the second point. So when yeah. once there is no kind of fundamental change, so it means to say the sector is continues to be trending. So we continue mm -hmm. to build the sector. When once we know that there's kind of any fundamental change that has happened in the sector, that means to say the sector is a lot of trend. So mm -hmm. we try to remove the sector at that point of time and rotate into another sector using the quant model, which ranks other sectors now. Okay. Now, what other uh, parameters we look at? Basically, we also look at from a risk point of view, is there kind of any kind of short-term measure that has come up just because of short-term spike in the ranking change in because of the quant model? So those are some of the things that we carefully look at. And we also understand is the sector going through any kind of crisis at any point of time. So any kind of hedging or arbitrage to be required, hmm. then we'll take appropriate calls on that at that point of time. Correct. Uh, so the fund claims uh, tax efficiency due to in-scheme rebalancing. I mean, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. So now, when I tell it is tax efficient, it's because in compare, it's relative term to the investor. So mm -hmm. if an investor has invested in this fund, Visavi is in doing his own sector management or the theme wise management. If he redeems one from one other theme and rotates the money to another theme, he, he ends up paying capital gains. Whereas mm -hmm. if he invests in a fund like this, we do the necessary sector rotation. Whereas we don't have to pay the capital gains being a mutual fund, we don't end up paying the capital gains on these rotations. So they buy Correct. that impact is reduced onto the investors. So that's what it is actually. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, 
what can you i mean can you shed a brief light uh, you know light on the trends or on the macroeconomic indicators that uh, you monitor or you may be monitoring going ahead uh, to predict the sector performance so one is oh, your high frequency indicators economic indicators that we look at okay that which is uh, specific to those sectors that is one second thing is we mm -hmm. also look at the forward earnings expectations from those sectors Correct. third thing is the growth aspects how much the growth is going to come especially in the revenue top line and the bottom line growth mm -hmm. and fourth is the pricing mechanisms like your momentum volatility of the sectors or the valuations of the sectors so how cheap or how expensive is the sector trading related to the benchmark or its own historical averages so okay. we look at those kind of parameters also we look at understand the government policies or the macroeconomic environment in which the sectors are trending or playing at, at the moment so mm -hmm. they are conducive enough for the sectors to trend consistently. So we continue to hold those sectors. Okay. So that's how we are able to identify the sector models. Okay. So the next question is about actually, uh, you know, is about the historical challenges. Uh, like based on the past sector performance cycles, uh, which sectors have historically been the hardest uh, to time correctly? I mean, obviously we should not be timing the market, but, you know, general, the general uh, uh, relevance about it. So, it also depends on how long the sector is trending. Correct. Once, like for example, FMCG is the highest trending sector. Okay. It has stayed in almost close to five years on a consistent basis. Some okay. of the sectors like your metal and mining are very cyclical. You will hardly mm -hmm. see they're coming up on the top. Even if they come, it will be relieved for short duration. So, we okay. have to be very careful with cyclical sectors like that. So, that are some of the things, challenges that are some of the okay. defensives and the constructive sectors like your consumer durables, consumer stables, or for that matter, your FMCG kind of connection, uh, FMCG kind of stocks, those are relatively stable. Whereas uh, sectors mm -hmm. like your, uh, the cyclical ones, they can be short-lived also. So we need to be very careful about that. But the indicators okay. can change very frequently and then it can be short-lived as well. Correct. Uh, so then the next question is about like, how do you balance the quantitative insights uh, with the qualitative analysis during sector finalization? Sorry, I missed your question. Quantitative? Yeah. How do you balance the quantitative insights uh, with the qualitative analysis during the sector finalization? With qualitative aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the quantitative aspects anyway is based on the factor models, it throws, it tracks the sectors. Now, the fundamental analysis, what needs to be overlaid above this, first, first mm, of all. We okay. need to understand why those sectors are trending. But mm. once we get a clarity on that, especially it might be a government policy change. Every year, for example, every year in the budget, there might be a few sectors which will be favored, few sectors which will be ignored. So now, yeah. there will be a kind of critical point we need to take, take cognizance about which sectors are kind of in favor by the government and which sectors are against the government policies. So those are the pa parameters that impacts a lot. Uh, that is one. Second thing is the macro environment. Basically, it might be your metal prices, global geopolitical factors, geopolitical policies that can impact. Mm. Trump policies. For example, I'm just taking an example. If Trump increases yeah. some tariffs on certain sectors, so that's going to be negative for those sectors. We need to wait and watch. So those are some of, some of the things that we take into account. So quant ranks the sector based on the performances and especially on the forward earning expectations. Overlay that hmm. with the fundamental kind of a view that will give a clarity on whether which are the sectors it will be trending at that point. Okay, uh, sir, uh, can you elaborate on what are the drawdown management or the what are the drawdown mechanisms that are in place? Uh, you know, uh, for the fund to ensure rapid recovery from the drawdowns. So, uh, as a design, uh, it being a thematic fund, minimum eighty percent has to be allocated to the equities. So okay. an option to have 20% allocation to cash or mm -hmm. uh, arbitrage. So we can take arbitrage calls provided large cap stocks are coming into that or any sector specific calls can be taken at the index level, sector specific indices. Can arbitrage can be taken on that? That's, that's one mm -hmm. possibility. So by define, definition, 80% is a minimum equity, 20% is optional that is left for taking cash call or arbitrage to minimize the drawdown. And typically what we have seen in the past, whenever the kind of the, the markets become volatile and kind of, for example, the current scenario where the markets are in a corrective mode, the mm. defenses will come on the top, like mm. FMCG or healthcare kind of a name, so consumer services, the consumption theme as a whole, okay. they tend to play out at that point of time than the cyclical one. The cyclicals will tend, generally tend to underperform. That's how we're able to see that the rotation happening between the defensives and the cyclicals as well. Correct. Okay. 
Uh, and this is the last question, I think. Uh, last uh, question is that like, for re retail investors, uh, what is the ideal investment horizon to maximize the benefits uh, of this multi-sector rotation strategy? Sir, any quant-driven kind of strategies, minimum of three to five years has to be given for any kind of quant-driven strategies. Okay. So this being a double quant engine kind of a thing, I think that should be the kind of horizon. So at least minimum of three years kind of a view, one, one needs to stay invested in this kind of uh, funds specifically. Okay. Minimum okay. of three to five years. And so, what can we say about the ideal investor? I mean, who should uh, uh, you know who should be looking at this fund and you know thinking that I should be the one who should be investing in this? What is the ideal investor profile uh, profile for this fund? See, this is this can be ideal for anyone. I don't say that it's not ideal for anybody, provided okay. they understand the risk profile of themselves. So, what is the kind of risk appetite they have on understanding the drawdown? This is a high risk, high return kind of a strategy. In okay. general, somebody can have a small allocation towards, even if it is a senior citizen, somebody assuming mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. depending on kind of their pension fund kind of income or something like that, even with a small allocation can be given to this because this gives a kicker in the longer run as well. Say okay. 5% okay. allocation towards this can be made in their kind of overall portfolio allocation that, that also is possible. But okay. I would suggest, recommend this for somebody who is young at age, who has got a longer earnings uh, kind of trajectory for the longer term and the wealth creation can be uh, something in the, in the long term they can make real good wealth out of this kind of so that's the kind of horizon somebody can look at uh thank you so much i think that's pretty much about it thank you so much sir for coming here and uh, you know giving your valuable insights uh on the fund uh, let me tell the viewers that the fund opens the nfo offer opens uh on uh, 18th of november 2024 and the offer for subscription is open till 2nd of december uh 2024 and uh, we wish you all the best, sir. Uh, hope it gets a massive, massive response. Uh, and all the best. Uh, and Thank you. Thank you Thanks for the Asset Plus Thank team. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.